Hey guys, Steven here, Fanatic Perspective. So we got some good news today. Jawan Mitchell has decided to withdraw his name from the transfer portal. He's going to stick it out at Texas for the time being. Very excited to hear that personally. And we're going to get into that. But first, I want to give a quick shout out to our video sponsor, Bosses Ranch. You can check them out, H-E-B, Cold Produce. I'm sure for any of you that had some Bosses Ranch yesterday, Super Bowl Sunday, it was a big hit. Check them out, Central Texas, H-E-B, Cold Produce. Links below to give them a follow as well. We're excited for them. One year anniversary on the shelves at H-E-B. So Juwan Mitchell, last week we had the Texas Update video. We had talked about linebacker depth and the loss of a Juwan Mitchell and what that meant for us in the spring, what that meant for us moving forward into the 2020 season and uh, hitting up the portal, quite frankly, to try to find replacement, try to fill in the depth. Well, sounds like cooler heads have prevailed. Juwan Mitchell whether it was folks in his camp, the coaching staff as well. I think a, a lot of parties came together and some folks, when his name went in, I, you know, from what I've read and, and heard from different folks, they were surprised that he entered the portal to begin with. Another, sounds like it was another dispute with Coach McKnight and, and hopefully they can get whatever differences they have uh, between the two parties reconcile for the best interest of the team because we need Juwan Mitchell. I talked about Delhi being out at least through the summer. David Benda wasn't ready to, to give it a full go last year. We'll see what we have with him in the spring. You have Marcus Tillman coming back from ACL injury. And look, whether it's Core Jaquez or Juwan Mitchell, you know, that was really kind of the group you had going into the bowl game, right? So, Juwan Mitchell started for us, you know, a handful of games. He's a guy, like I said before, great blitzer, somebody that was starting to really show his worth is a, is a little bit of a thumper and run support. Excuse me, and run support, and he's developing. I believe he still has two years of eligibility to play. Uh, but as we see, you know, some, some of these guys develop, we need him there. And, and Honestly, I expect him to be a starter at the inside linebacking position. With with his skills in the defense that we're moving to, Chris Ash, Coma Hustler calling this thing, I expect him to be featured in a defense that allows him to play to some of those strengths that I that we saw under Todd Orlando. So I also think, you know, as as a, as this brother took a step back, looked at it with his camp. What what other opportunity are you going to go into where you have a better chance to play at, at a school like Texas right off the bat? And when you look at the situation that Texas is in, this this needs to be a mutually beneficial relationship. And I think it can be and will be as long as those relationships are at least repaired to the extent that we can have a functional working environment. That's, a, that's it. Because from what I hear, I don't think he has other problems with it's like you know, a slew of issues with a whole bunch of people on the team. I think it's just Coach McKnight and him and, and them trying to figure out, navigate that space. And for those wondering uh, or, or who aren't aware, the strength and conditioning coach spends the most amount of time around the kids more than anybody else on the staff. So that's that's part of where you have to have those things tightened up. And I'm not blaming Juwan Mitchell. I'm not blaming Yancey McKnight. Uh, but for the best interest of our team, that's what I'm interested in. For the best interest of our team, that relationship needs to be buttoned up because Juwan Mitchell, at, at least in the spring, he's going to run out with the ones when, when they get started. Let's just be honest, right? Uh, and where they go from there, if David Bendham makes the leap. And the other thing, too, is the position that they play. It's a high-velocity position. We saw Jeffrey McCulloch battled a lot of injuries last year uh, over, over a period of time. I mean, we haven't – you need bodies at that position. It's like the running back room situation uh, with the amount of collisions and, and, and the physicality that will be required of someone in that role. So having him back, he's again, he's not a guy that's just a body. He has things and skills that he will add to this defense that, that, that help us to get better. And the other thing that's important that I want before I, I leave off here, 
it allows us to keep Joseph Osai playing where he needs to be playing in a pass rushing role and a role where he is allowed to be unleashed and get after the quarterback. Now, I will say, I still want him to be a three-level defender, Joseph Osai, that is. I think that's beneficial for our defense because he is so gifted at all three levels of defending, defending the run, defending the pass, and rushing the passer. He can do all those things. I just want to see him in a position where he can rush the passer consistently, you know, 70, 80% of the, the, the time and not having to be asked to do basically be a traditional linebacker out of necessity. Let's do it because our scheme and, and, and we can take advantage of certain matchups that are advantageous for Texas. So this, 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 this news is big. It affects multiple positions. It affects, you know, the pressure on David Benda, the pressure on Delhi to come back. They're still going to compete for that role, but Jawan Mitchell, I, we're better with him than we are without at this point. So, like I said before, hopefully everything gets tightened up. And, and, and the other thing, too, is and when you look at the case of Joseph Osai and how we can utilize him properly this will help his nfl draft stock and yes we are already having that conversation because texas needs to start getting people drafted period when i say drafted i'm talking about first second round picks i'm not talking about oh we had a couple guys go in the six or seven round steve like we still get draft picks no i'm talking about we are sending people because that is the one thing that people are out there on the recruiting trail using against texas as ammunition and it's true they they're not developing guys to the point where they can get to the NFL. They're not showcasing guys to the point where scouts will fall in love with certain skill traits like we saw with an Isaiah Simmons from Clemson. I'm going to continue to use that example. Many of you have commented and see the same thing. So I want to have a position where with our team and the amount of talent that Chris Ash and Coleman Hutzler are inheriting overall, year one should be dynamite, period. Should be With all the players coming back, Talent-wise, experience-wise, over the last two years, the combined starts with all these kids, it's time. And I want to see Joseph Osai utilize, yes, in a primary pass rushing role, but also give him those opportunities to do certain things, help increase his stock, help increase whether it's B.J. Foster, DeMarion Overshone, Caden Stearns. These are guys that, I expect when they got here freshman year, hey, we have the potential to, to finally get over the hunt with the first round stuff and get that stuff off our back because we know if we start to hammer home those picks and get guys paid and get guys drafted where they should be based upon their talent level, that can no longer be used against Tom Herman and this staff when we're starting to have player development conversations and you don't miss out on folks like Akili Ringo in recruiting because – Folks can't use that against you anymore. So just keep that in mind from from a from a from more of a macro perspective here. Okay. But welcome back, Juwan Mitchell. Much, much needed. Hopefully we can get on a a smoother path here these next two years. And I expect him to be a starter at least in the spring and uh helping our defense compete for a Big 12 championship. Guys, that's all I got. I'm, I'm curious to hear anyone else's thoughts on everything I just shared. And for the folks that had reached out to me last week following the video I had released on the Texas Update saying, hey, Steve, we think there's a chance he could flip. I appreciate y'all and your sources. All my message board warriors, appreciate every single one of you. Guys, horns always up.